One of the earliest photographs to appear in the paper documenting the change happening in town uh, was posted in 1949 for the dredging of a new breakwater. The caption reads, the dredging in the bite for the new breakwater is now well underway. Above is pictured the large dredge working at the toe of the breakwater and when completed will give boats a 10 foot clearance and a year round anchorage. In 1950, the first announcement of the pulp and paper mill was made. The caption reads, On this site at Duncan Bay, above Campbell River on the east coast of Vancouver Island, a 40 million newspaper, newsprint mill will soon be erected. Blasting is still in progress on the site. The plant will be owned 50-50 by Canadian Western, Western Lumber Company and Pacific Mills. First unit to be built is a newsprint mill. This was not the first development planned for this site, as Mike King had planned a large town site to be constructed on this spot in the late 1800s. It was to be named Duluth, and the plans for this community can be found in the museum at Campbell River's archives. On June 11, 1952, the newspaper reported, The newsprint mill at Duncan Bay went into production this week. Located four miles north of Campbell River, the mill has been almost two years under construction. It is operated by Elk Falls Company Limited and is staffed by veteran papermakers from Ocean Falls, Powell River, Port Angeles, and other newsprint centers. The mill did not remain static in this time. As soon as June 24, 1953, the newspaper was reporting that the Elk Falls Mill at Duncan Bay is involved in a purchase which will see Crown Zellerbach Corporation take over the interest of Canadian Western Lumber Corp Company. Canadian Crown Zellerback formerly held a half interest each in the mill. Over the following years, the mill continued to develop and expand its operations, bringing more and more people to the small community of Campbell River. This aerial photograph, taken in 1950, shows the new breakwater, as well as the new government wharf recently installed, and the demolition of the previous wharf. You can also see a little bit of downtown Campbell River. When the photograph appeared in the paper, the caption reads, Campbell River's waterfront takes on a new look as the old wall wharf falls beneath demolition crews. Beyond is the smart new wharf and the newly finished fishing floats within the sheltering arm of the breakwater. Bob Langdon, BC Airlines pilot, almost stood his plane on its nose to assist the Baldwins in getting this fine aerial shot of the foreshore of this popular fishing resort. One of the challenges brought on by the sudden influx in population to Campbell River was the lack of space in local schools for the children of all the employees of both the John Hart Dam Project and the Elk Falls Mill Project. This image, taken in 1950, shows the recently completed Campbell River Elementary Junior Senior High School, which was constructed quickly to help deal with some of these issues. The caption for this image, which appeared in the local paper, reads, Official opening of the new Campbell River Elementary Junior Senior High School, an aerial view of which is shown here, will be marked April 28th. Among those attending the event, including trustees of School District Number 72, will be Honorable, Honorable W.T. Straith, Minister of Education. This aerial view of the new school shows its location, where Phoenix stands today. Built up on the hill, you can see downtown Campbell River in the distance, and you'll notice many changes from what our downtown core looks like today. Although the initial John Hart Dam and generating station was completed in 1947, the project was far from over. Although they have been recently removed in the latest BC Hydro project, the wooden penstocks were a key feature of the original John Hart Dam and generating station. This image shows their construction. This image, which appeared in the newspaper, the aerial view of the generating station, also showing hydro hollows in the background, was captioned, Further expansion of the John Hart power plant, pictured above, will swing into action shortly, according to a recent report from officials in Victoria, who state that the damming of Buttle Lake will commence soon. This image, which appeared in the newspaper three years later in 1956, reads, 
Work at Lador Powerhouse is depicted in this Baldwin photo. The unit will supplement power generation at the John Hart Powerhouse and is expected to be in operation in mid-1957. As the power project continued, more images appeared in the newspaper. In 1957, this image appeared and reads, Huge laminated support for bridge over the Campbell River at the foot of Upper Campbell Lake was photographed by the Baldwins as it passed through town last week. Measuring 82 feet 6 inches in length, the piece will form part of a bridge being built by the Power Commission to replace the ERT bridge, which will be flooded out when water starts rising back of Upper Campbell Dam. Jumping backwards in time a little bit, this image appeared in the paper in 1953. Its caption read, Aerial shot of the Campbell River shows portion of Campbellton and the new Campbell River Bridge which will be officially opened on Monday by Public Works Minister Honorable P. A. Gaglardi. The photo is by the Baldwins, courtesy of the Daily Colonist. This photograph, also taken by Godfrey Baldwin, perhaps on the same day, shows the community of Campbellton as well as the bridge. At this time, Campbellton was a separate community from Campbell River. Godfrey Baldwin was very fond of aerial photography, and there are a number of his photographs which appeared in the newspaper. This photograph, which appeared in September 1953, shows some of the development in downtown Campbell River. This aerial photograph, taken only two years later in 1955, highlights some of the changes happening in downtown Campbell River. You can see there are more buildings, many more cars, and a keen eye will also observe the original location of Campbell River Cenotaph right on the beach. This image, which appeared in the newspaper in August of 1955, reads, Campbell River Waterfront will be the scene of a park and business area development if present plans are carried out. Development will take place from point near Richmond Court to another point near the present Kinsman's Children's Playground. This image of Campbell River's downtown waterfront was taken in 1959. You can see the children's playground and also the original location of the Van Isle Theatre, now the Tidemark Theatre. One of the other developments in Campbell River to deal with the influx of newcomers was the construction of a state-of-the-art hospital in 1957, seen here. The new hospital was officially opened in early September 1957. In this aerial photo, you can see where Campbell River's development was at that time. The hospital stands quite apart from the rest of Campbell River. Another developmental milestone was reached for Campbell River in August 1959 with the opening of our airport. The caption reads, Big moment for Campbell River arrived with the landing of this Pacific Western Airlines DC-3 which touched down on the new landing strip shortly before noon Sunday. The inaugural flight was a test run for daily scheduled flights between here and Vancouver starting September 27th. Two years later, this aerial photograph appeared in the newspaper. Its caption reads, Changing face of Campbell River is reflected in this aerial photograph taken Monday by Godfrey Baldwin. A striking feature is the amount of waterfront development which has taken place in the past six months. What the caption is referring to, of course, is the large fill that you can see in the upper right-hand corner of the image. This was once Willow Bay, the waterfront along downtown Campbell River soon to become the Taiyi Plaza, a contentious development project that was gripping the community at this time. Although the Taiyi Plaza project was contentious, in the end it was able to go ahead because it was linked with getting the Quadra community a car ferry. There were no natural safe wharf sites that existed on the Campbell River side, so the ferry landing development was included as a part of the fill project. This image, which appeared in the newspaper in 1961, shows the work being done to move the location of the original Quadra Island ferry berth spot. The caption reads, Trucks dump gravel to start Quadra Island ferry slip moving job. 
Present landing is in right background, 500 feet north of new location. This image shows the Quadra Queen car ferry at her newly completed dock. This aerial photograph appeared in the newspaper in 1962, showing the newly completed Tai Plaza. The caption reads, Tai Plaza from the air. The new Tai Plaza development has been a remarkable engineering project. Thousands of tons of fill had to be dumped into what was once Campbell River's downtown waterfront before any construction could even be considered. Aerial shot from an Okanagan helicopter shows the marina breakwater in the foreground, Quadra Island Ferry berthed at center, and the new plaza. Allowing the creation of the Tai Plaza set a precedent in Campbell River for filling in waterfront to create more land. The Tai Plaza was not the last area to be filled. The development of the Hidden Harbor condo complex was built entirely on fill, and Robert V. Osler Park is also all fill. Discovery Harbor Mall has been the most recent area of waterfront filled in to create more retail space in Campbell River.